Hey, this is Dave from metalepidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. What's up guys, Dave here from Metal Epidemic, back with another album review and for this review Duncan, Kyle and I have been checking out the new album from American metalcore band Wrist Meat Razor. The band's new album Replica of a Strange Love will be released on June 11th via Prosthetic Records. So uh, these guys have been active since around 2017 uh, when Wrist Meat Razor was actually just the solo project of guitarist vocalist Jonah Thorne. Uh, now with a full band and one album under their belt, the band returns with their new offering, Replica of a Strange Love, which follows up their debut full-length, Misery Never Forgets, released in 2019. Uh, the album was produced by Isaac Hale of Knocked Loose, engineered and mixed by Andy Nelson at Bricktop Recording Studios and mastered by Brad Boatwright at Audio Siege. Uh, Replica of a Strange Love is said to be a modern take on metalcore, building on the foundation uh, of the band's past to leave a shimmering trail of visceral energy in their way. Okay, so um, cast your mind back to just a couple of weeks ago, we did a little reaction video on YouTube, you can check out, for uh, one of the band's singles, uh, Anemic, and um, we were all fairly kind of surprised at, at what we got on the reaction, to be honest. Um, it, it wasn't really what I was expecting uh, from a band called Wrist to Meat Razor. Um, or from the label. I don't, know, I don't know even know what I was expecting. Yeah, well, it's prosthetic record, so you were expecting something noise corey. Because that's their bag. Yeah. I mean, that's what prosth prosthetic records primarily does, like the ugliest, nastiest sounding shit that you've listened to in a while. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like, and but I think you primed us by saying. I think they're metalcore, and I was like, right, that'll be interesting. It's weird that they say that they they're going for a new style sound because to me this is, I think we said it on the reaction. This is like the origins of metalcore. This is early two thousands, yeah. very late nineties, early two thousands metalcore, yeah. and I for one am overjoyed yeah. with that because metalcore has went a long way. Some people, myself included, <laughs> would argue maybe too far away from where it started. Um, and it's nice to see bands flipping back. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, they've got that kind of, as you said, the kind of early metalcore sound. There's also a bit of hardcore in there. There's a little bit of post-hardcore elements coming through in this as well. Um, definitely took me back to to the old school days of like Remember and Never and Seven Angels, Seven Plagues. You know what I mean, but there's there is some similarities to some newer bands in there as well, like mm -hmm. your kind of uh, CU Space Cowboy or even a wee bit like Renounced and stuff like that as well. But um, that even even the production of this though is it kind of reflects that time period. You mm -hmm. know, like from so from a like nostalgia point of view, um, I really enjoyed the references to that era of metalcore and hardcore. It's, it's I don't know it's something about it. It's, it's a lot more kind of metallic and mm -hmm. kind of rough around the edges in some ways. Um, not in a bad way, just kind of less less cookie cutter than a lot of modern metalcore is, um, mm -hmm. which is usually quite kind of process sounding. You know, it's, it's time aligned, as Kyle like, would like to say <laughs> now and again. Um, Predictable th th this album is the doesn't have that. A lot of modern metalcore. Yeah, yeah, is absolutely. Very, there's very, there's very a lot of generic stuff out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, this album, like from the get-go, it doesn't have that kind of sheen that you would hear from metalcore bands in 2021. Um, but I, I think this is like a conscious thing that the band have done. Um, and, and in all honesty, I, I kind of prefer the sound and production that Wrist Meat Razor have gone for. It's it's far more kind of believable to me. I definitely connect with it more with that kind of sound and style, mainly because I grew up listening to a lot of that like late 90s, early 2000s metalcore. Uh, and although they use a lot of the same kind of motifs you would hear from that era of metalcore bands, you know, the, the kind of chunky breakdowns, the dissonant guitar squeals and harmonics, um, they do also blend in some other elements. Um, so it isn't just an imitation, I didn't feel. Mm -hmm. um, like we, we heard uh, when we checked out Anemic, um, there were some really nice like clean vocals 
kind of woven into it um, that lean more towards the kind of post-hardcore, yeah, a little bit of new metal as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, and those those kind of like those those cleans are, are there from the opening track of the of the album, um, our distress entwined, uh, and then you can hear them scattered throughout the rest of the album on tracks like Anemic or uh, Eyes of Sulfide or Psychophant, um, which. Uh, when I was listening to that track in particular, um, it had a very almost kind of agony scene type vibe about it, mm-hmm. um, especially in the kind of clean vocals. I was like, I was thinking of the of that agony scene album, you know, the one album that they had that was just fucking <laughs> stellar. Um, was it Darkest Red? Was that what it was Darkest called? Red? Remember. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, uh, there was some of the melodies in that were very similar, but um, I really dug that as well. Um, it also has these like kind of kind of breather tracks. Um, amongst the album as well, um, Love's Labour's Lost, and I think there was 99 and 44 out of 100. <laughs> These song titles are amazing. Um, there's some nice kind of retro synths and like more atmospheric elements blended in. I thought those worked really well on those tracks, and the placement was really well. Uh, it was, was perfect, really, just to kind of give you that moment of kind of respite before they kick back into gear. Um, Sometimes, sometimes those types of tracks can kind of derail an album, um, depending on where they're placed or how they sound. But I think in this case, it definitely they worked in, in the album's favour. Um, I mentioned on on the reaction when we we uh, did the anemic reaction, I was getting some kind of glass jaw vibes uh, on some of the cleans, um, and I noticed that again when I was listening to the album. Um, there's another track towards the end called uh, "This Summer Sorrow 2. Um, and again, the cleans were very Daryl Palumbo from Glassjaw, um, both in the kind of tone and the way that he phrases some of his lyrics. Um, that, that track is, is probably one of the most melodic tracks of the album, um, but I actually really enjoyed that side of the band. Um, I'd love to hear them kind of add some more of that into their sound, but um, I think whatever they do, they, they do execute it very well. Um, each style that they, they come across with the metalcore, hardcore, post-hardcore, um, it's all done really well, and I think that track, The Summer Sorrow 2, is just another example of how kind of dialed in they are to the different genres. Uh, it never feels like they've just thrown in another style to try and be different. It always feels like justified. Um, the, the only moment that I was kind of on the fence about was the very last track, um, which is, is obviously meant as a kind of outro, um, but I don't know, there was something about it that felt felt more like an interlude to me like i was expecting something to come after it um mm-hmm. and i'm still not sure if i liked the way it ended i think i think i'd rather it just finished with this summer sorrow too personally but that's just me um aside for that though I, I did really enjoy this um i think these guys are really good at what they do um so i enjoyed it both from like kind of nostalgic side of you uh, point of view um, but I also enjoyed the kind of newer elements that they, they brought into their sound as well. Um, it's, it's a real easy listen for me. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, Duncan, what did you make of this one? Um, I, I mean, I'm pretty much there with a lot of what you've said. Um, I think I diverge just a little bit when it comes to the vocals. I think the vocals, for the most part, work really right. well. I love the kind of abrasive uh, vocal that they have. I love the clean melody, which yeah, it did kind of rem- it reminded me a little bit of Glass Show. I think I said it on the reaction as well. At times, the band remind me of really early Thirty Six Crazy Fists, um, which I enjoyed. Like just Ooh, some of the yeah. melody choices, it, it just kind of sits in that that level as well. The thing that kind of stops me from loving this is weirdly the thing that we pointed out on the. <laughs> On the reaction, which is the kind of new metally Jonathan Davisy sort of vocal, which is not the main melody, mm. and it comes it's used quite a lot in here. And sometimes it totally works on tracks, and then other times it doesn't at all, in my opinion. It sounds too. It almost sounds like it's slightly out of tune, like it's just a little bit out of key. Um, and I, 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 it worked mm. for me on some tracks where it like, all meshed up and it fit what the guitars were doing and the melody and all the rest and it worked really, really well. And then other times it came in and I was I, I just was like, either scream or do the clean vocals, but don't do that vocal. And at times it sounded like, mm. like a really bad Marilyn Manson. Um, and I, like, I, I don't know, it, it didn't work for me in all the tracks that it appeared on, but most of the tracks it did. So... All the rest of the elements are completely 100% stuff that I love. I love the song construction, love the interludes. Like, you give me weird kind of retro synths and a bit of synth wave and 
interludes. I'm usually a happy guy, um, and the fact that becomes kind of a, a recurring motif in terms of how they build those breaks, which I think the album needs. I think it's smart to do that. You get to, it ramps up to a certain point, then you get a small breather, and then it kind of resets and does it again. And I think that works very, very well for them. Love the production on this. I think it aids the sound of the band greatly. And I think they're really good at what they do musically. I, like I said, when we were, well, you know, it, bringing it in at the start, there is a predictability with metalcore which has ultimately made me less interested with it as a genre. Occasionally, band, even even the bands that were at the forefront of that have fallen into this very, this is a template of a, a metalcore song, has to tick all these boxes if it doesn't, you know, we haven't written a song. Um, and I just find that not interesting. The, the the beauty of Metalcore when it came around the first time was, you know, it was that hybrid of the kind of angsty sort of energy of hardcore but, you know, those grooves of metal and, and smashing them together and there was something really exciting about that. And I think what we've lost is those kind of almost organic grooves in favour of, right, well, this is where the breakdown comes in, and this is where the singing interlude comes in. And we've, we've just become a box-ticking exercise. Uh, Wrist Meets Razor aren't that at all, and I think that's what makes me really excited about them. There's a rawness to them, which I gravitate to. I agree with you. Mm. I've, I've spun this a couple of times. It's a very, very, very easy listen. And it did. It made me It made me feel like I was, like, yeah. 19 again, like, at college. Uh, which it, like it, I I enjoy that. There's something, and it's not manufactured. It, that's just how they sound. And I imagine if you sat down with them and chatted to them and asked their influences, their influences will be those bands that we grew up listening to. I I can't see how it isn't. They're so deeply ingrained mm. in what they do. The modern elements they bring in help as well. So yeah, I think the songs are here. I think the production's here. I think it's a great length of an album. This isn't even 40 minutes, so you can spin this very, very, very easily. I love the mixes that they do. The only thing yeah. I'm not sold on is that kind of new metal vocal that comes in. Sometimes it really works on certain tracks, and then other times, like I say, it sounds like it is a fucking ball here out of key. And for me, that just it causes the eye to twitch a little bit and make, uh, just a little wince when it was coming in. But yeah, out with that, I mean, really, weirdly, it's everything that I was hoping it would be from the video for Anemic. It's everything I was hoping it was going to be in an album and they delivered that. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased about that. And this is a yeah. band I'll listen to plenty of times more kind of after. Yeah. I, I, know, I know what you mean about the vocals, um, but I was, as I say, I, I had the kind of I definitely felt that kind of glass jaw type feel and his vocals do that as well you know there's yeah. moments where you hear him you think oh that's almost kind of out of key but I don't know it just kind of worked for me for some reason I don't know why but yeah uh, Kyle what did you make of this? <laughs> Not being a metalcore fan it was like I don't know it just felt like they obviously have influences from way back in 20 years ago you know and mixed it with a bit of new metal and stuff and for me it was all like Okay, I can hear those influences, and I can hear all the other bands I've listened to in the genre do those things before as well. So it kind of felt like more of the same to me a little bit, with some really good standout parts. So the kind of what they based it on was not particularly remarkable. Like it was just metalcore I'd heard I've heard twenty times for the past twenty years. But the few parts that I heard that did stand out, like the synths and the retro stuff and the weird vocals here and there, really, really did work really well for me. And I really enjoyed those parts, but for the most part, it was like, okay, they've got a growly verse and a singy chorus. You know, I'm like, mm, heard it before, come on, guys. And they're trying to push so much, we're doing a modern thing, we're doing a new take on blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, you're not really, are you? You're just doing the same old shit, but adding in a couple of a couple of things. So mm. for me, it would I didn't gravitate towards it as much as you two, but the production was really, really good. And I enjoyed the bass tone and the guitar tone and the drums were really good. And the vocal mix was really, really fantastic. So... Apart from those few parts that really, really did stand out in a very good way, and I hope they lean more into them into the future to make themselves more unique in any genre, not just metalcore. Yeah, um, yeah I'll probably put this on a few more times just to see if it changes my mind. But <laughs> but for me, I mean, you, you, you're harking back to influences from 20 years ago. You've got to do something new with it. And 
you guys are fans of the genre, so you you'll probably like enjoy it more. Cause like, yeah, this is how it used to be, and I'm just like, yeah. Man, I've heard it a thousand times. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but otherwise, it's a solid put. They know what they're doing, and it's solidly put together. I can't fault them at all for doing that. It's just um, I wish it sounded a bit more unique than what did in this album. Yeah, I'll definitely check out what's coming next. Definitely for sure. Yeah, but yeah, really well put together, but just no, yeah. Not for me. <laughs> I think it's it's quite impressive that they've, they've only been to go since like 2017, yeah. um, and this is like their second album already. So it's quite impressive how far. So he has a whole band kind of now. Is that what you were saying? So this one's the first one with the whole band yeah. together. Yeah, I quite like that. I mean, I'd, um, I'd be interesting to check what his what his original release sounded like then. I don't know. All right, so this might just still be one. I don't band. know if actually the first album was recorded. Uh, yeah. Right, no. On. No. So I think it was it was one guy initially, and then I think I think before the first album came out, the, the whole band kind of came together. But there got was you. kind of stuff before that, like got you, got you, got you. maybe yeah, singles yeah. and stuff like that. I'd be, I'd be interested. Like, there's enough um, in here yeah, that I actually, thought was really good that I would check out the previous, you know, the previous yeah. work. There is because, like I say, and it's like Kyle says, there's a nostalgia with me and that particular time period and that particular sound that. You know, uh, yeah. you know that for me is a is an itch that I like scratched. So I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely. Uh, these, interestingly enough, I, I mean, a band that shouldn't possibly be on this label, but if this is what Prosthetics now putting out, you know, diversifying a bit, and they do have other bands on there that aren't noise core. It's just primarily that's what mm. they're known for. Uh, you know, bands like Pig Destroyer and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'd be interested to see where these guys go. And if they tour, I would definitely go and see them. Yeah. Um, okay, so ratings for uh, this new album from Wrist Meat Razor. Um, as I said, um, I suppose I'm, I'm kind of a mark for this type of stuff, but um, I really enjoyed it from a kind of nostalgic point of view. Um, it reminded me a lot of those bands from that like 90s, 2000s era, you know, your Equal Vision and Ferret Records, that kind of stuff. Um, so I did really enjoy this. I, I really got into it. I can see exactly where you, both of you are coming from um, and, and what Kyle was saying about the kind of originality and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I totally get that. That is, you know, it's it's been done before, um, but I, I still enjoyed it. Um, so I'd probably go a, probably a four out of five on this one for me. Um, Duncan. I'm 100% with you, 4 out of 5. I mean, I really like this, uh, and it will get played again, so 4 out of 5. Nice. And Kyle? I'm going with a 3.5 out of 5. 3.5, cool. Uh, this one drops on June 11th on Prosthetic Records. Um, if you want to check out the band, it's facebook.com forward slash wrist meat razor. I'll put a little link in the description below to their Facebook and any pre-orders and stuff as well. Um, let us know what you think. If you've heard any of the singles, drop some comments in below. Happy to hear your thoughts and opinions on it. Uh, that is the review. Thank you once again for checking it out. Much appreciated. We'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone.